Joey Porter Jr. is quickly becoming a household name, not just amongst Pittsburgh Steelers fans, but amongst fan bases across the nation. Everybody's taken notice of what he's been able to do against premier wide receivers. And this past weekend against the Cincinnati Bengals and Jamar Chase was no different. Uh, welcome back. Let's break down a couple of plays of Joy Porter Jr. and his matchup against Jamar Chase and the Cincinnati Bengals. On this first play, you see Joy Porter Jr. coming into the screen. He's locked down against Jamar Chase. A little handsy at the top. I was kind of surprised that yeah, there's no flags on this play. He did get a flag a little bit later on. In this situation, maybe a little bit handsy, but I like the physicality. I like the fact that this is early on in the game. This is showing Jamar Chase what kind of day he's going to be having. Let's rewind that a little bit. Joy Porter at the bottom of your screen on press against Jamar Chase. The Cincinnati Bengals are going to put the running back in motion and spread him out wide in hopes they're going to move Joy Porter Jr. to the outside and perhaps have a linebacker covering Jamar Chase, which, let's be honest, that's happened in the past before. Not on this situation. Now, this is one of the plays where Jamar Chase does make the reception, and there is a penalty. This is the play I mentioned earlier that was negated by the flag. But look at the coverage. In my opinion, I think that the first play that we saw was more egregious. Uh, this one, not so much. Maybe the refs are trying to make up for the last play. But I like the coverage. I like his ability to interrupt the timing of the play by interrupting the route of the receiver. And when it comes to route running, Jamar Chase is one of the elite in the NFL. I didn't really see any hands, not too much on that play. And here's an example of Joey Porter Jr.'s ability to disrupt the timing of the route. This is one of the reasons why I think that he's becoming one of the more elite cornerbacks in the game. Now, in this play here, this is the one where Herbig came in and make a statement. Let's watch that. I like this play by Joy Porter and the defense. What they're doing is they're showing a press man coverage across the board with a safety over the top. And the Bengals are going to be running two quick routes that are going to be crossing each other. This is a good decision when you're playing man coverage. However, the Pittsburgh Steelers are disguising man and dropping back into zone and browning for the Cincinnati Bengals. He just never looks off of the receiver either. He makes his decision. He sees you know man coverage, pre-snap, makes his decision. Joy Porter Jr. almost comes up with an interception. Just eyeing the receiver the entire way. Never looks off. Gives Joey Porter the opportunity to read that in like a book. Let's watch that in regular speed. Now it's third down two. Huge play for the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. It's those waiting moments that make the bigger difference. And when you have a cornerback who is making an interception in the red zone against an Odell Beckham Jr. and making these type of plays on third down, he's quickly becoming one of the most elite cornerbacks, in my opinion. He's quickly showing why he should have been a first-rounder, and I couldn't be happier that he fell to the Steelers at number 32. Well, on this play here, this is going to be a running play going to the opposite direction. Uh, this play is the one where Patrick Peterson ended up making a tackle uh, on the running back, but, but I wanted to show you guys the backside of the play where Joey Porter Jr. and Michael Walker, they have their way with Jamar Chase. It's a, it's a good thing to see. You, you, you'll enjoy it. And then we'll transition to the top where the uh, play is at. It was a good play all the way around. Let's rewind that a little bit. Just look at what they do to, you can see him right here. Look at what they do to Jamar Chase. Just knock him on his rear. You can just probably rewind this and watch it all day. Probably should have let it hang a little bit longer. Now, this is one of the plays that Joey Porter Jr. Uh, lost, so to speak. Going up an elite receiver like Jamar Chase, you're not going to win every route. You're not going to win every battle. This is one of the ones that he lost. But in a losing effort, I don't think he could have positioned himself better. I don't think he could have played this play any better. I think this is just sometimes when you're playing NFL talent and elite talent, they're going to make plays against you. I mean, remember the play back in training camp with George Pickens where he just kind of one-handed, on top of his bag, shoulder, impossible type of catch, and went viral uh, over Joey Porter Jr. You know, even in that play, I felt that he had pretty good position and 
played the that play the best he could. Just like I said, sometimes when you're going up against elite receivers, uh, they're going to get the best of you every now and then. And this is going to be the final play. And this really doesn't have anything to do with Joey Porter Jr., but I did want to just kind of show you guys what Trenton Thompson did on that interception. Again, Browning is a quarterback that's going to stare down his receiver all the way through. And Trent Thompson just kind of reads that. Also, I think maybe Browning's thinking the Steelers are going to be in some sort of man coverage, given the fact that it appears that they're going to blitz. But middle linebacker is going to end up dropping out, and this is going to be zone cross. And Browning can't read it fast enough. Stares down his receiver, throws an interception. Great play by by Trenton Thompson. But when it comes to Joey Porter Jr., I think the Pittsburgh Steelers got a steal when they ended up drafting him 32 overall, first first player picked in the second round. He was a guy that, you know, I'll be honest, I was a little bit concerned going into the draft that the Steelers were going to draft him solely based on his name and who his father was. When the Steelers moved up to 14, I was pleasantly surprised when they went up and got Broderick Jones. I was also pleasantly surprised when Joey Porter Jr. was there at 32. Not that I thought that Joey Porter Jr. was going to be a complete bust. I just wasn't sure, given the fact that he had only had one interception in college, if he was worthy of the first round grade and top 20 pick overall. In the second round, however, I thought it was a great steal and a great choice for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I thought he was going to be raw and still a project just based on the fact that he's a little bit handsy. However, his game has transitioned into the league. And although there are a few flags here and there, the playmaking ability and the ability to make routine plays routinely in weighty downs in those bigger moments, not let those moments overcome him. Tell me we're just scratching the surface when it comes to Joy Porter Jr. And sky's the limit when it comes to his ability, talent, and where his play can go. Only time will tell in his Play on the field. Next game is against Kyle Murray and the Arizona Cardinals. I'll be doing another film breakdown, though, before then. So make sure you like and subscribe and ring that notification bell. That being said, I'm Daniel, the State of the Steelers. We'll see you guys next time. Peace.